Hi, Joe. Jimmy? <laughs> James, is that you? James, I haven't seen you in so long. <laughs> what happened, man? Meet Joe, everyone. Hello. Joe. Joe is my longtime buddy. I got some sniffles. And we make music on occasion. And we drink a lot of alcohol together. Lunges. Joe has no idea about this album I'm about to tell him about. I bet he's never even heard about it. I'm not, probably. And I think it's a good introduction to talk about it with him as it would be to hear from me. So, what do these names Nat King Cole. mean to you? Alice Cooper, Johnny Depp, Perry Farrell, Dave Grohl, Robbie Krager, Brian Johnson, Christopher Lee, Paul McCartney, Joe Perry, Slash, Zach Starkley, Joe Walsh. Sounds like a super group. Like a reality television program. Oh, it is a super group. This is all them? This is what we're about to listen to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're fucking with me, right? I don't really like the name. What is it called? The Hollywood Vampires. The Hollywood Vampires? I don't know. It's kind of lame, but I mean, I, I understand it, and I'm pretty sure it's borrowed from an Alice Cooper song. Oh, okay. I think he has a song called The Hollywood Vampire. But well, uh, I like Alice Cooper. It's pretty cool. Yeah, hey, Cooper's cool, right? I like Johnny Depp. You know, he's a cool dude. I like most of his movies. I like Johnny Depp playing guitar with Eddie Vedder or Ryan Adams. That makes me like him. But I, I don't know what to expect from this at all. I, it came up on Amazon Prime, this album nice. um, special for $12, which I thought was 12, awfully cheap. 12 bucks. And it Man, came, came. What were the names again? Oh, that's all of them. Bruce Willis? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Willis. <laughs> no Bruce Will. Whitkin. But I see on the back here some of these songs. They do a whole lot of love. Obviously, Zeppelin. My Generation, which is the Who, I would assume, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's see, Break On Through, Doors Cover, um, and obviously I think some of these are originals. My Dead Drunk Friends being the last song. That was almost me at one point in time, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. Well. It would have been an ode to you. <laughs> <laughs> no way. To... John Varvatos Records. I didn't even know the man put out records. No. John Varvatos, he does a so fashion designer. Oh. He does luggage, too. Anyhow, as fans of classic rock, right, and fans of music, this is going to be a very interpretive listen. And it could turn out that this is utter garbage, or it could be badass. I don't know. I have heard nothing of or off of this. Have you had a bad... Record that you listened to yet? Thus far, no. Uh, this will only be 11. The 11th review. Oh, okay. So, still a couple behind my goal of one a day, but, you know, starting out, it needed a couple days, right? But let's get to the point. Let's put on Hollywood Vampires. Links below. Pause the video. Give it a listen. We'll come back and talk about it. LP1, side A, or we can just listen to the whole thing. It's more to be natural, like what, what comes. We're just talking about it as a, an LP. I mean, it's quality gatefold cover. I like that it's two LPs. They didn't try to mash it all onto one. And why should they with that much star power in one product? Um, seems like Alice Cooper is predominantly singing, like, he sings on every song other than the intro. Dope. I like that. To our brothers, Glenn Buxton, Keith Moon, John Lennon, George Harrison, Richard White, Harry Nielsen, Jim Morrison, Ray Masaryk, Jimi Hendrix, Noel Redding, and Mitch Mitchell, John Bonham, Pete Ham, Tom Evans, Mark Boland, Randy California, and Ed Cassidy, Arthur Lee, Brian McLean. Steve Marriott and Ronnie Lane. Oh. 
those are some names to think. Anyhow, it looks good. 180 gram pressing. This was at 12 bucks. They can't really be making anything on this. It's not a fancy uh, colored vinyl. Those no. are going around, but here we go. The method. Oh, that spindle hole is tight. Tight. Is it? Why? Tight. From the. Just the when they cut it, it. Oh. I mean, it's a good thing. You'd rather it be tight than loose. But uh, that's. Um, that's what he said. But naturally. I like it. There's not a whole lot of like the papery crap on here that usually happens with these new ones. They get shoved into these sleeves, and the sleeves aren't cut real well, and you end up with all these little fibers. But you can see they did like a broad press at 33. One track is like they didn't try to cram them in. You can really see the in between the actual individual tracks. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's like just that. dead air. There's nothing. But like. For instance, uh, Sensory Colors, the Portugal the Man album, it's it's a long album, um, and it's only one LP, and it's not 180 gram, and they forced it onto, you know, two sides instead of, in this case, four, and so you, like, take it out, and you just, like, groove, 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 and they just uh, pack all these songs in, um, which, you know, kind of, kind of surprised, it, like, almost looks like there's groove wear, but it's probably the thickness of the LP itself. Because, you know, a lot of times you've seen a record that's been spun a lot, it starts to look flatter and flatter and flatter. Because mm -hmm. you're eating away. And it almost has that. But I'm probably just looking at it too. You know? Meticulously. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm Well, let's see. Let's see what this sounds like. I have, I have absolutely zero expectations. Uh, and, and I don't know. Me neither, man. I don't think I've ever heard anything. So, end of LP1. A couple of positives, a couple of questions. Um, did Bacardi pay him to use that logo? I mean, that would be the first one. <laughs> um, side B ends with the lime and the coconut just kind of fading out unintentionally right there. Oh, he gave too much away. I would've... What? What's that? Oh, you should've you should been like, hey, there was a nice little outro there for, uh, you know, just to kind of provoke him to go and listen to it. Or whatever. Joe wants to provoke you. That's what he's saying. He's going to provoke you right in your ear hole. <laughs> Anyhow... Some takeaways from record one. What do you think? Uh, well, I think you agree with me that that fucking Doors cover was pretty dope, right? Yeah, that was by far the best one. Yeah. That. I mean, it started off pretty strong, too. I mean, well, after the intro, naturally. Some, some thoughts uh, were like, oh, it's almost generic, but... The reality of it is is you can't be generic if you create it generic, as most of the guys in this super. is Joe says, it's a super group. They they made these generic sounds. So you can't call a spade a spade and be mad about it if, you know, <laughs> if that's it, you know. You can't. Well it's just original. It's not there's the sound that's a, it's more original to them. Right. Well, for argument's sake, I don't know. Let's 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 fast track it. Let's say let's say thirty years from now. You've got for the sake of a, a modern band that people care about that might cling on. Arcade Fire. Okay. And let's say they're hanging out with people from The Killers and the Black Keys, for easy frame of reference. And they make music 
that sounds like their music. You you would say, well, it is that. It, it comes from that place, but you can't begrudge them for it because yeah. they're the ones who did it first. Yeah, naturally. So, interesting, the Brian Johnson vocal on, on there sounds... Um, like Danzig, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, I was looking for it. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like Danzig, which was unexpected at all. Yeah. It's, oh, a whole lot of love. Yeah, a whole lot of love. That was probably my second favorite track off of it. Yeah, there's a really um, satisfying use of harmonica. I would call it the harp. The harp. Um, kind which of is confusing because <laughs> there is an actual harp instrument. <laughs> But there's no actual harp on it, it's a harmonica. Well, needless to say, first LP of the two. A solid effort from a super group. Um, full of covers and um, not boring, which is good. Yeah. Uh, so, you know. It's kind of unexpected. A little bit. The uh, Christopher Lee intro is cool. It's kind of dark, kind of sort of want more of that, sort of take me to that place with the Danzig or the, the, um, oh, what comes to mind? Uh, what was that band called? The really big dude, oh, Typo Negative. I don't know if you've ever listened, but it almost sounds like it would fit a Typo, uh, album. But, uh, instead it leads you right into the, you know, 50 year old talking about my generation, style of playing, but they, they update it. They make it sound more like if Motley Crue was playing that song. So, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Definitely not entirely pleased, but definitely not displeased in it. No. Just sort of like... Uh, unexpected how well it carries the two, the two sides. And man, that God, that Doors track is just so good. Yeah, they played the believe play, played the bass on a bass instead of on an organ, like the yeah. Doors did. So and the vocals were pretty spot on. Musically, I mean, obviously these guys have been doing it all their lives, so I guess they can't really argue with that. What's the question? Like, why? Why did they do it? Why do you think they made it? Like it? Fuck, who knows? Because it could. It could. <laughs> yeah. I, I. Is anybody... It feels it feels like a pet project for Johnny Depp in some ways. I I notice he's along with Alice Cooper the only consistent person on every track, um, and the only person who wasn't like a musician by trade. Uh, so maybe it's and, just Johnny Depp getting his jollies off and, with all of his favorite musicians. And playing songs he likes and <coughs> having a good time. So, we we talked about the fact that Johnny Depp uh, attests to not watching his films. He doesn't watch his movies. Uh, but apparently he's never seen any of them. Do you think he listens to this? Does he go home and put it on? And, ooh, yeah. I don't know. It, I like Johnny Depp. That's an upset. But there's got to be some some uh, gloating in there. He's like, "Hey, other Hollywood actors, look at my rock star friends." Hmm? And not bored, but definitely not sure I would go out of my way to put it on. I think I would rather have seen this live than have it on a record. But I agree. That'd be dope to see live, just to see all of them, all of them in one place. Especially like what they did. They did play at that small venue. So let's listen to the second LP. Let's do it. And go from there. Vegelata. If this record was as good as I hoped it was going to be, I would say this was Vampire Blood or something <laughs> like that. But let's say that LP2 put the nail in the coffin for this one. <laughs> We'll be as polite as possible because respect. These guys are amazing dudes, but 
the second part, man. Well, let's let's talk about a, a review of the album. If you want to own this for what it is, it's worth it at twelve bucks. If you're in an overpriced record store and you see it for thirty nine dollars because of all of the fun names that were on the promo sticker there, don't fucking buy it. I'm just gonna come out and say it's not worth forty bucks. Um, but overall, pretty cool to have. Uh, I'll probably just keep it as a collectible. LP1 was enjoyable. LP2, we're going to talk about. Not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, really weak and unimpressive. And as far as the quality of the pressing goes, there was a double pop towards the end of the first side that clean yeah. record, clean needle, good player, shouldn't be there. So. Not sure if that's specific to this exact pressing or what, but nevertheless cause for alarm. So, I don't know, if you've got this LP and you're watching this, let me know if yours does that. I'd be appreciative of that information. Okay, so track for track, let's just break this down. You hit side C, Sir Paul McCartney. What, what comes to mind? Do you think that's got to be good, right? Yeah. You know, fucking wings, Beatles. And musically, it's kind of powerful for all of 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. But what happened? There's something that happened there, man. Where just the song... Fuck, just listening to it for a while, it began, became like... It became like... It, I think Joe was being polite and not <laughs> saying anything, because we enjoyed the first side. And about halfway through the song, I just came out with it and went... Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> tell, it was almost like they got him in there just to do it. And then they, he did his own song. Yeah, it's, it wasn't even... The, why don't you sing a different song? I mean, if you're going to be on... Uh, well, come and get it. Okay, so it's an expression. And it's a lousy one. And then they take that. And it's the whole song. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, come and get it better. It's so lame. And then that doesn't make it bad enough. They break the song down towards the end in the studio and add this nonsensical fill and Paul singing again. And just that becomes a trend throughout the second album. Oh, yeah, it does, man. They, like, there's a lot of studios. What was that, a record scratch? I think we both looked up, like, holy, did somebody just <laughs> <laughs> run the needle across the record? It just, the song completely cuts out. Yeah, and, and there's like some laughter. Right? Yeah. And what's the other one? The, the, a lot of hokey, unnecessary, gimmicky crap. Let's say on side D, School's Out, which is Alice Cooper's song, of course, he nails that one. But he, they, they are overlaid it with extra alarms. And, of course, they feature Brian Johnson. There's a harmonizing sort of vocal. Yeah, I actually like that. You did too, though. Yeah. Right? That, that was actually a positive point. That track was actually... Well, and Joe noticed it more than I, is that they, it kind of took the two of them and brought them together, and then the, the uniformity made it more than, I guess, just hearing Alice sing the song mm -hmm. yet again. Yeah. Um, it's two great songs to kind of mash together, you know? Oh, yeah, because it, it, that's the song that bridges into another brick in the wall, where they, they sing the words to the, the Floyd classic, but they don't actually change the music. Right, they're still singing... Well, the music is still schools out. Hmm. And cool. Slash is back there, riffing away. It's dope. Um, Ichiku Park, uh, that's an older song they cover. Probably the most poppy uh, of the numbers. That's a throwaway as far as being the worst on this part, in my opinion. I think that was the one with the scratch on it. The record scratch, yeah. But let's let's talk about the album closer, which uh, just do it, man. <laughs> it's a review. Well, okay. So the the it says it's written by Alice, Tommy, Bruce, and it does say Johnny Depp, 
but I feel like they can just scratch that. <laughs> and and we'll put in put in Jack Sparrow. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. That's it. Well, that's what I think. I'm not 20 seconds into the song, and I'm uh, what I say. This sounds like a like a Pirates of Caribbean. It should be a what do you say? The track of a Pirates of the Caribbean three or yeah, they four. Put it in the next Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Go. That's what this sounds like. And wait for it. They oh. go there. You know you you sh you should listen to this track if you haven't. And you're just watching this for, I mean, I imagine, I hope that everybody's listening to it with us and the amount of way they get it. But maybe even go back and listen to it again. Yeah, at least. And it's just, you'll hear the ro ho, ho <laughs> the fucking. It makes you want to go like this. And they're dead and they're drunk and they argue and drink and they drink and they argue and, and throw up and you. And, yeah. It's not enough to go through that phrase like a on one time, but they think they they beat it down through two verses almost is what it, it's worth. And it's comical, and for the sake of these guys as the, the greats they are, if you will, I hope that it's intentional. It's meant to be playful. It's meant to be... Uh, oh, for sure. If it's serious... If it's ever serious. All, it's at all serious. <laughs> oh my god. Then they're just. Then they're already dead. Because. Yeah. <laughs> no, fuck. No, I'm joking. Say that. I'm joking. There. It's, it's unfortunate that the album started um, sort of okay. There's some decent covers. And uh, I would have called it uh, an average, like a C. I would have graded it a C. Um, saying that it's not something I love, but it's not something I hate. Uh, the second LP... Destroyed. Uh, meltdown. Yeah. Which oh. is unfortunate. What, what's your grade then? A D. You go D? A D, which is the worst uh, grade yet. And, um... Uh, kind of unfortunate. A D for here. dead. A D for dead. Which is what dead this dead. record is going to be overall. If you get it and you like it, I do apologize, but that is my opinion, and it's that the second half of this record is really, really weak, um, and uh, just for the sake of making a whole album, I don't think it's necessary to continue to force more in there. Mm -hmm. um, they could have they could have shaved some of the fat, maybe given us just the single LP, and yeah, shit, man, they could have done different covers. You know, they got in different, you know, I mean, they all know each other, obviously, to a certain degree, you know. That's true. I mean, I, if, if I heard some more covers that I really, really like, like, I really enjoy Zeppelin, so, you know. Yeah. And then, obviously, The Doors, that's the, the first part of it, it kind of carried because I was hearing a lot of covers that I liked, and then the second part is, like, Maybe not necessarily covers that it. It's just not songs that I would n normally seek out. Like, you know, I'm not gonna go listen to. Here it is, come get her, fucking yeah, come get her. Yeah. So weak, in the sense that it's from Paul McCartney. I suppose if you heard it from another group of, you know, older musicians, it would almost seem like it would be acceptable. Yeah, I don't know. It's all in all, it's called it's not like vampires. It's sort of gimmicky in that and of itself, and I, I suppose maybe you should expect it, and it it shouldn't be um, it shouldn't be taken to heart. But the the sad thing is, is that as you said, they use these classic rock covers of really good songs to kind of in, attract the listener, and I will say that's definitely part of the reason why I bought it. And, and they kind of pepper it with... Yeah. It's stale shit. The studio fucking... The studio gimmicks that they use... That's the yeah, worst. Now, when you're, when you're listening to a song and you immediately... Like, when you're giving it... When you're giving an album attention... 
like the way that you and I have just done. And if at any point you and I are just sort of kind of conversing about it and we have to stop and literally look at each other, like, is that really happening right now? Like, is that going to happen on stage when they're performing this at the Roxy? Probably not. So maybe... Scrap it. Yeah. And, and they didn't need to do that. They're just such talented... I just, I don't even like to talk shit, you know? It's, it seems like it was, it was boredom in the studio or trying to push it a little further than what was necessary because maybe they thought they had to live up to expectations, but in the same way, if you've heard any of the sort of like the AIDS bands that have come back and tried to make modern efforts and maybe some of it's trying a bit too hard, that's, that's what I would call those studio yeah. tweaks. I don't know if they're working with a producer who seems to think that that's a thing to do, or if maybe that generation of musician um, likes that because it's a tool that they have at their disposal now, and it's them showing off amongst themselves, which I'm sure part of this was. But as a listener, not judging it because of their greatness before, but judging it as a whole, as an album itself right here, uh, disappointed. And that sucks. You get a D. D for disappointment. Unfortunate. I'm not even going to grade it. This isn't my, uh, this isn't my jam. I'm just here to kind of chat shit with it, but it's the man right here. Just say great. thank you to Joe for hanging out with me and doing this. Yeah, man. It's been fun. It's been all right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting format having somebody else with me as you've watched, if you have watched all of these so far, but it's still an ever-changing thing. Not exactly sure where the final product will be, but I like the idea of having somebody with me and getting a second set of opinion um, and sort of learning how to guide the conversation and make sure I include and also bounce off of him is good, and I liked that. So in the same way, please also... You know, chime in if you want to. And like always, if you can, subscribe to my page, like the video, comment below any information. Find me on Facebook, Daily Vinyl Online, Instagram, Daily underscore Vinyl, and of course, this YouTube page. Share it with the hashtag 365 Album Reviews in 2016. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we sort of did it. <laughs>